word, and if you would turn to Romans chapter 8, we'll look at our first verse. Now, there's a statement here that we're going to look at that uh, after reading this, you're going to want to be on God's team. Uh, definitely be on God's team here. How do you get into God's team, by the way? Jesus yeah, accept the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, Romans 10, 9. Being on God's team uh, is the right team. It says here in Romans 8, verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to what? His, His purpose. purpose. His purpose. God has a purpose. Everything he does has purpose. I think sometimes I wonder if man, what he does, is there any purpose behind it? I think we just kind of float around and you wonder what purpose uh, is being demonstrated there. But God has purpose. And he has a purpose for man. And he has purpose for man that he would be his child. That he would be born again of his spirit, be in his family, that God would be their father. And so we're on God's team. And he has called us to be on his team and because he's called us according to what? His purpose. Not your purpose. His purpose. Now, you know... This is interesting here because, you know, some people see God and others don't. Uh, but you know what? God has sought you. If you're born again of God's Spirit, He had you in mind a long time ago. And He has called you with a purpose. That's for sure. God has a very specific purpose for each and every one of us. Uh, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, please. You know, when we got born again, it wasn't some haphazard thing. But I trust we, we uh, saw what God made available, and uh, we wanted some of that, and we made some decisions. And... We got into God's family. So in 1 Peter here, it says some wonderful things about us. You're all there except me. I'll be with you in a moment. Hang on to your Bibles. Oh, you're right. That's okay. okay, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And this uh, word, a peculiar people, uh, in the Greek, as we look to that, it's a people of acquisition. What's that mean? A people of acquisition. I got it. We got bought up. God bought us. He paid the price. What price did he pay for us? His son. His son. There's nothing more precious than the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing more precious. And uh, I don't know. I, I look at myself, and I'm not worth the price that was paid for me. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, my goodness, the Son of God. Yeah. But gee, God did that, right? He paid that price. So the value of, of who we are in Christ is, is up there. Big time. Big time. So we are a uh, people, a chosen people, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you. Okay, if we've been called, God has called us, he's paid the price, then our response is that we should show forth praises, right? Show praises 
of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. I know when I was uh, 20 years old, uh, I got born again. I'm pretty sure it was then. I, I don't know if as a kid I heard enough of God's word that I got born again as a child, but I tell you, go back, when I was 12 years old, I had a fear that uh, came before me that scared the hell out of me. Because uh, at that time, as a young child, you know, I was just having fun, living life. I lived in Hawaii. My dad was in the military, so we were over there a few years. We were over on the big island in Kilauea uh, volcano area. There's a camp over there, military camp. And uh, we're just having the greatest time, you know, no thoughts of any seriousness. But I'm 12 years old, so I'm you know, maturing a little bit. And I saw a movie or a television program, Disney, Walt Disney program on Tomorrowland. And it talked about what the earth would be and, and civilization would be and housing under the water. 200, 300 years in the future. And I thought, I'm not going to be alive then. And that, that stark reality scared me. I, I'm not going to be alive then. And then I started thinking about life and death and what's the significance of living. And I cried all night long. And I was so afraid to even talk to my parents about it. And, uh, I had great parents, loving parents. They weren't, uh, you know, religious folks, but they were loving, and, and, uh, but I didn't say anything to them. And I just held on to that fear until I was 20 years old. And, uh, and somebody shared with me God's Word to the extent that I could understand it, that I could fit it, that I could see how it works and fits perfectly like I've never seen any other philosophy or any other beliefs. And I said, boy, this is it. I've arrived. I got born again and got into God's family. And I'm starting to learn, man, what to be a son of God, to have a relationship with God Almighty, to have eternal life. Woo, this is tremendous. So, uh, man, oh, man, darkness into his marvelous light. That means something to me. Because my life was in darkness, and now into his marvelous light. But there's a point here I want you to see, and it's that we're called according to God's purpose. If you're born again, you are called according to God's purpose. God has a purpose for each and every one of us mm -hmm. if we're called in his family. Do you think he would haphazardly call us in his family and have us just lay around the living room all day, watching cartoons and doing nothing for them? No. Man, we can have great purpose. God can have us do the things that only we could do in the family that will be meaningful. And, and we can have great sense of accomplishment and fulfillment in our life because we're doing God's will. We're doing what God has called us to do. Uh, so what is God's purpose for us? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3. I, I want to look here at this particular verse now because, yes, we have purpose, and I want to work this, but Jesus Christ had a purpose, and, and I want you to see where this is at here in Ephesians chapter 3 and uh, verse 9. I'd like to pick it up in verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. You know, the context here is the mystery that was hid uh, for ages and ages until it was made known to the Apostle Paul and revealed here and other places in the Bible. So, Make known 
What is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world or ages hath been hid in God who created all things? By Jesus Christ is not in the text, but it's God who created all things. Jesus Christ didn't, but God didn't. That's why Jesus Christ shouldn't be in there. Somehow the trans some new translators put that in there. So, uh, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, okay, by the church, the churches that called out believers, that they would know by the church the manifold wisdom of God. What's manifold? What does that word mean, manifold? Huh? Demonstrated. Demonstrated? It's, it's a full revealing, full demonstration would work of the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The power of purpose in your life. I, I teach a class at a career college, and it's a psychology class, and it's a class to to help the individual uh, students there develop character and, and, and so forth. And one of the key points I share in this class, and it uh, comes from a book that I use, is the power of purpose. The power of purpose. And with purpose, you set goals. Okay? You set goals. If you got a purpose. If you don't have any purpose in life, why set goals? Because you're just floating around anyway. But if you have a purpose for something, if you have a passion for something, then that power of purpose, you're going to set some goals. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to have the integrity to follow them through. You're going to do them. You're going to get into it. You're really going to get into it. So purpose is a big thing. And, and I love this section in the Word because it talks about the eternal purpose which God purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And you know what? We're a part of that eternal purpose. Because we're born again of God's Spirit. We are co-heirs with Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. So we're right in there in the family of God. And we are right in there in light of God's purposes. And this is something we all should think about, is what is my purpose in the body of Christ? Well, let's look a little bit more here in God's Word. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I want to look here because this uh, shares with us some things uh, about us, who we are in Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse uh, 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all, die, uh, all dead, or therefore all died in him. They died in Christ, okay? And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto who? Themselves. Themselves, okay? So when you get born again, you start seeing the greatness of being a son of God, a daughter of God, you know, you start looking outside of yourself and looking to God and living for something else besides yourself, you know? And, and look at this. Uh, Henceforth should live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Who's that? Jesus, Jesus Christ. We should live for him. See? You and I are God's passion. He dreamed to have children. And it took the death of his son. He raised him from the dead and he gave us all that are born again the gift of Holy Spirit. We are born again of God's Spirit. We have incorruptible seed and we are the apple of his eye. We are the dream that God dreamed years ago when man, Adam, fell, lost the connection between God and man. And now it's back. Now it's back. There's a connection now. And God's pretty excited about it. And we should be pretty excited about it. 
And that's why when we see these things here, I see this verse here that we should be to, uh, that we should live for him. Therefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, or a new creation is a better translation. Some of your Bibles, I've got a King James that I'm reading here. Some of you probably have other Bibles, and it probably is a new creation. So we are a new creation in Christ. Man, we have a whole new lifestyle and a whole new purpose of living as born-again ones. A whole new purpose in living. Um, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. He has reconciled us to himself. He's brought us back to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us a ministry of reconciliation. What does what does reconciliation mean? To bring back together what was separated. Yeah, to bring back that which was separated. Good definition. So we have a, a ministry. So right off the bat, as believers, we have a purpose of bringing people back to God. We have a ministry. And we read in chapter or chapter verse 19. It talks about a word of reconciliation. And then it goes on talking about we are ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a great purpose. Every believer has this privilege of bringing people back to God. There's no greater thing that you'll ever do in your life than to help somebody get born again of God's Spirit. And can you think of anything better than to bring eternal life to somebody else? No way. No way. I mean, we're helping each other with the Word. We're already born again, so we're working with each other, encouraging each other, <clears throat> teaching each other so that we all can function according to the calling which, wherewith God has called us so that we can help other people get born again, help other people grow and live this wonderful lifestyle that has purpose, that has meaning, that has significance. Man, oh man, this is good stuff. So when I was 20 years old and I heard this, you think I got a little excited? Mm -hmm. Wow, I got excited. It was tremendous. We had a, I was in college on the East Coast, East Carolina University. You ever hear about that school? But we had a, a way home. We had this house where a bunch of believers lived and uh, we ran classes. I think we had 50 people take, the, over 50 people take a Bible class that really taught them the Word so that they could live it. And we had fellowship. It was great. Uh, and, and I just, you know, this is a long time ago. Too, not too long ago this happened. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 I still like doing this. It hasn't gotten old. So some of you guys that are young, don't don't worry that you'll wear this out, you know? <laughs> this, this thing about being a believer and holding forth the word will get boring. It just gets more and more exciting. It really does. Philippians. Let's go to Philippians. Yeah, nothing greater than you could do is to help people with the truth of God's word and Getting born again, growing in the Word, is just the greatest thing you could do. So to Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in my, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Great attitude of prayer with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. You know, praying for people, for their fellowship in the word of God. Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that exciting? Amen. That he will, this work that's begun in you, it will Continue to perform. And the word perform is really the word complete. Complete. Finish. 
finish it until the day Christ comes back. So, what a wonderful calling. Even as it is meet or adequate for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. You know, he was in bonds because probably he was in jail or he had bonds. He had, uh, what do you call them? Handcuffs. Handcuffs and those kind of things. Uh, Shackles, yeah. <laughs> and yet, he had this attitude. He prayed with joy. I don't know if I could do that if I was in jail and had shackles on and I would have joy in praying. <laughs> but, boy, Paul did. For God is my record, how greatly I longed after you, you all, in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Verse 10, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Wow. Well, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. I want to zero in here on our calling. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, let's start in verse 17, but as God hath distributed or imparted to every man as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. You see that? God imparts. To every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk. You know, God's going to be calling you. You know, we want to answer that call. He's going to be talking to you. He's going to have you do some wonderful things. He's going to encourage you to talk to Joe Smuckatelli on the corner here. <laughs> and see if, you know, that this guy's hungry. Talk to him. Encourage him. Bring him to fellowship. Okay? So, also, and so uh, ordain I in all churches. He ordained this. This, is, this was serious business. Verse 18, is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Hey, it doesn't make any difference. Don't get all excited about circumcision. Well, it says that in verse 19. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But, but the keeping of the commandments of God, let every man abide or continue in the same calling wherein he was called. Okay? You and I are called of God. So we have the privilege to continue in that calling. Continue in that calling. Verse 21, art thou called being a servant? Care not for it? You don't like being a servant? You don't care for that? But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Maybe you are a servant in the culture of where you're at. And, but you know what? You're free in Christ. And that's bigger. That's bigger than being a servant. And you know what? If you're free, you you know you don't have any, you're not uh, a bond slave or anything like that. Where you you uh, by culture for whatever reason you're a servant as a job, but you're a free man. Well, what does it say here? For he that is called in the Lord. Let's see, verse 21. We read that. No, 21. Art thou being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called being free is what? Is Christ's servant. Christ's servant. You are bought with the price. You are bought with the price. Be not ye the servants of men. Now what was that price that was paid for us? Lord Jesus Christ. Big price. 
And, and that's our value. You value the item by the price that's paid. And there's nothing more precious than the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the price that was paid for each one of you. That's why you're so valuable to God. And He wants you to, He's called you to work. He's called you to serve. You are bought with a price. Be not the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called, therein abide with God. Abide with God. Continue with God. Stay put with the things of God. So we've been called. And we have the opportunity to stay with that calling. So let's go to... Um, 2 Timothy, I think this is the last section we're going to look at tonight in God's Word. 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 1. And uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start in the first verse here. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, Paul was called, right? What was he called? What's his function in the body of Christ? Gentiles. 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 But what does it say here in this verse? Apostle. Paul's an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's his calling. That's his job in this body of Christ by the will of God. It was God's will that he do this according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, or the un, you know, unfeigned is fakeable uh, faith that is in thee. In other words, her faith was genuine, it was pure. And he's talking about, hey, do you remember your grandmother? Do you remember your mom? They really believed. That is in thee, which dwells first in your grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You know, Paul ministered to Timothy. This is addressed to Timothy. And he, he, he laid hands on it, and he at this time, one of two things happened. Either he ministered to him to the extent that he, to operate his, the nine manifestations that he had, or he laid hands on him to give him a gift ministry. Um, either one is great. They're, they're wonderful. Um, but the point here is, is what? Stir up the gift. Okay, we have the gift of Holy Spirit in us. Stir it up. Stir it up. He had a ministry. Timothy did. Stir it up. Stir it up. Now, really, this word stir up, and I'm hoping some of you have different translations, and maybe this will concur with what I'm going to share with you. But in, in checking these uh, words here, we can go back as far as we can to the text, Greek, Aramaic text, and, and try to get as accurate. Because what happened was, the word when it was originally given, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, right? God breathed word by revelation of Jesus Christ. These men of God heard the word, they wrote it down, or they told it, and I wrote it down. And then somebody took that word of God and they made copies, and through the years, all these people are writing this thing, and, you know, we get problems. Man is infallible. He makes errors. So in research, we go back as far as we can to see and work God's Word and get as accurate as we can here. But 
the word here, after all of that, <laughs> is light your fire. You know? Do you have that? The flame? To fan, fan, the fire. fan the flame? Fan the fire. Fan the fire. Fan the fire? Fan into flame. Fan into flame. Fan into, see, that's, what the, that's a more accurate rendering of this. Okay? You got a little Holy Spirit fire going in there. See, this little Holy Spirit, and it's like a pilot light. I've got the my uh, fireplace is uh, artificial; it's gas, <laughs> and uh, 24 hours a day, 12 months a year, there's a little flame going in there. And my wife wants me to turn it off during the summer so we save five or seven, ten cents, you know. <laughs> but there's this always this little fire going. See, we all have this fire in us. We have this this fire burning. It's Holy Spirit, and we want to you know, get this thing going. Let's get hot for the Lord. Let's fan the flames here. That's what He's talking about. Stir up the gift of God. Let's operate all nine manifestations. Mm -hmm. Let's do what God's called us to do. Oh, wonderful. For God, verse 7, hath not given us the spirit of fear. Now the word fear here is kind of a different word that's not, you know, different Greek word. And it's translated perhaps better as cowardness or coward. Do you have some of you have that? Mm -hmm. And and uh, so that really fits here. We're, you know, the, the exhortation in verse 6 is stir up that gift. Let's get it going here. Don't be afraid. Don't be a coward. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power mm -hmm. and of love and a sound mind. Amen. Isn't that neat? <laughs> so that's what we stir up, that wonderful gift that is of power and of love and a sound mind. Be there not thou, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of the Lord? How could we be ashamed of it? You know, it led us to the new birth that God is born again. Nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. You've been called. See, I've been called a lot of things in my life. <laughs> Sometimes not very good things. But we have been called by God a holy calling, a special calling. See, He has saved us. He has called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works. It's not what we do that counts. It's what He did in Christ that counts. And that's how He's called us. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Purpose. See, that purpose comes in there so beautifully. To his own purpose. So you've been called with a purpose in mind. God has something for you that only you can do in the family of God. I mean, if we really get specific with this, and if we really walk and believe God's word and, and the things we're seeing here, man, oh man, we just... We can have a sense of fulfillment each and every day as we walk for God and do what He's called us to do. We've been called with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace. Thankfully for grace, huh? Mm -hmm. Thankful for grace, which was given who? Mm -hmm. Us. In Christ Jesus, before the world began, or before the ages, maybe some of them, so God had this all figured out, and you were in the plans way back when, whenever it was, that he would call you. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Just amazing, see? Mm -hmm. now, now we have the privilege and opportunity to purpose in our life to do what God has called us to do. Man, oh, man, I mean, that's... See, when I, when I got born again and, and saw some of these things in God's Word, I, I was so thankful because I wanted to be somebody in my life. I wanted to really count. You know, you live life once and that's it, they say. And I wanted it to count. And, 
And man, now my life counts. I've helped people get born again. I've taught God's Word. It's the Word of life. It doesn't return void. So, we've got a life that is so exciting to live. Amen. Amen. I'm real excited about this fellowship. Because I, I just believe some great things are going to happen here. Amen. 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 <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the ball's in your court, right? Mm -hmm. Ball's in my court. I've got to do it. I take the ball and run with it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, is that true? Mm -hmm. All right, I've got a ball here. Okay? All right. Okay, the ball's in your court, right? Right. Now, you got to make it go. Now, that's a volleyball. <laughs> now, what about this one? That's a football. That's a different ball. But each one of us are called uniquely, right? Mm -hmm. We all have little different jobs to do. Here's a ball for you back there. All right. We have a golf ball. Catch. <laughs> And a head can't say to the time. It's all right. Now, there's, I don't have any more, but God has <laughs> them. I made it go. Okay. <laughs> so the ball's in your court, right? We, and, and it's great. It's a joy to walk for God. It really is. It's, it's exciting. It's thrill. You just no greater thrill than to see people respond to the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. It's a word of life. God, hey, what is... When do the angels have a big party in heaven? When somebody gets born again. When somebody gets born again. They don't party for any other reason except when people get born again. That's crazy. Yeah, isn't that wild? So, well, bless your hearts. It's a joy to be with you tonight. Let's play this song. It's another one of uh, Scott Powell's, and it's a, it's a pretty neat song. It's a song that you perhaps can reflect on some things.
teach me to love and what to say. But all I have, I want to give. Your love, your grace, your gift. So teach me, Daddy. You're with me, Daddy. Good morning, Daddy. This day's for you. Heavenly Father, we're very grateful that you have called us and what a privilege it is to be in your family. Thank you that we can have a life that's significant and valued and that has purpose, Heavenly Father. And You said in the manifestations that you paved a way for us and that you have called us with a purpose. So I'm grateful, Father, that we can take to heart what you've called us to do, and I'm thankful for these wonderful folks here, for their, their heart's desire to be their best for you, Father, and I just pray that the word can really reach out in a big way from this wonderful fellowship. So I pray for everybody here, and for a sweet evening for the rest of this night, and a great day tomorrow, because... We have a purpose, Father, and you've called us to a high and mighty calling. So I pray, Father, in the wonderful, powerful, loving name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.